In this video, I sit down with Jake Larson from Video Power to talk about how he does customer research to build killer converting YouTube ads. More on that right after this. Hey guys, on with Jake Larson from Video Power. Uh, Jake is one of the best YouTube creative minds that I know. I, I asked Jake to sit down and help us put together a video talking about his amazing audience research process to put together higher performing, as he calls them, unskippable and profitable YouTube ads. So Jake, thanks so much for joining me today, man. Thanks for having me, John. I'm, I'm excited to, to geek out on audience research and YouTube ads with you. Yeah, it's fun. So just to give a little background, Jake and I have known each other for a while. And what I think is really interesting is we both like to focus on the data side of creative. Jake has a creative background. So he definitely is further along in the process of understanding how to put together great content. But I think what's really interesting is, you know, reading your stuff and kind of going through my stuff, we have very similar structures as like how you put together a sales message. And that's because putting together a sales message is kind of proven science, right? It's kind of there's steps that involve starting with the problem, leading to the solution, the call to action. But I think what's so cool is you've kind of gotten into the weeds to try and put yourself better in a customer's mind using this process. And so I just want to, that's something that I think is really important here is a lot of people try and build a sales message from their own shoes and aren't really getting into their customer shoes. And I think your process really does a good job of bridging that gap. So excited to let you dive in. I'll let you drive and we'll, we'll kind of go from here. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, I think that's a good intro because I mean, we've, we've been doing YouTube ads for the last six years. We've spent like $15 million on ads and we've been able to show profitable returns most of the time. And it really comes down to like a simple formula, which is like putting the right video in front of the right audience and giving them the right offer. And if you can hit all three of those, those elements, like you can get a pro, like a positive row ads or, you know, a great return on ad spend where you can put a dollar in and get $3 out or $5 out. Um, and un underlying all of those layers, it's, it's the audience. It's knowing who your audience is. So um, one of the, I want to share my screen because one of the cool stats that we learned, uh, I was at, the uh, Google brand summit a couple weeks ago in New York city. And they had this guy from the unskippable labs team and he was sharing some stats of what he's learned from watching all of these ads. And uh, can you guys, can you see my screen right now? Yep. I'll make sure. Sweet. So uh, one of the things that he shares is if, if a campaign, if a video campaign's not performing, it could be several factors. One or 50% of the time, it's the actual video creative and 10% of the time it's the act. I mean, it's targeting, uh, you know, and, and if you think about how far targeting has come with, with Google and YouTube and Facebook, like you can pinpoint your exact audience by age, interest, all that kind of stuff. So if the campaign's not working, it's not the issue of targeting. It's, it falls heavily on your creative. So, um, so but, just for, for those of us right here that are doing math and we say, okay, this is 60%. The other 40%, I'm just guessing that comes down to your funnel and your offer, right? That's kind of gonna, the process. I'm gonna, I, what I say is it's 30% chance it's your offer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then like a 9% chance it's, it's maybe a, the way you've structured the campaigns or the pixels or technical setup. Got it. And then 1% I attribute to like time of year. Uh, Got it. If you're trying to advertise during Christmas or Memorial weekend. It's just, it's not lining up. So Got that's it. how I cool. break everything down. Beautiful. But uh, so with, with that being said, like the video, knowing your audience is responsible under all of those, those factors. So I kind of want, as far as our formula for audience research, uh, it fall, it's like this. We gather survey data. From that data, we create actionable insights. And those insights go get written into the scripts. And from there, you have your, your video production and if you do all these elements right, you get the right video. So this is kind of how we see this process moving forward. Um, and just to kind of, like a, a story is like, we've worked with, with clients that who we thought we knew who their customer was and they thought they knew who it was. And we, we wasted lots of money on the ad, the creative um, and the ad spend. And it, it just bombs. So like this, Audience research is like so important to know who your customer is. So I put together three tips. I've got three tips, three case studies uh, to share with you so we can dive deep on this. Uh, tip number one, actually talk to your customers or your clients. Um, 
when I first started video power marketing, I, st I, I started advertising on YouTube. I had create, I created a couple of courses. Like the first one was like how to make a dollar a day on YouTube. Um, and I remember I wanted to call up my first, the first 10 customers that bought my product, I called them up. I wanted to know all about them. Uh, so a couple, some of the questions that I think everyone should ask, uh, is one, how did you find out about us? So I call up, his name was Tom. He was my second customer. And I said, Tom, it's Jake from Video Power. Thank you for you know, trusting us and buying the product. I'd, I'd love to know more about you. Uh, do you have 10 minutes? And he was like stoked that someone was giving him a call. Like, he was really excited about that. So I was like, yeah, man, for sure, let's talk. I said, sweet. Well, my, I guess my first question is like, how did you find us? He's like, oh, I saw your ads on YouTube. I'm like, oh, sweet. Like, they're working. Like, that's awesome. Uh, and then my next question, I was like, well, what was your first impression? Like, when you saw the ad, what did you think about, uh, about me, about the, the agency, and about the course? He's like, well, to be honest, I thought you were kind of annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all right. Good, good feedback. But, like, you thought I was annoying, but then you bought my course anyway. Like, what was, what was the gap right there? Well, he said, I, the first time I saw you, I skipped the ad and then I kept seeing your ad and I, I watched the ad about six or seven times. And after the seventh time, I said, you know what, maybe this person knows what he's talking about. Let's see what he has to offer. So he got on the list and saw the offer, bought the product, but it took like seven times of seeing an ad or the message for it to finally get him to move. So that was for me, that was great insight. And I would have never known that had I not, you can't get that type of information from uh, a survey or, uh, or guessing, right? You, you actually need to pick up the phone. So then my next question as well was like, why did you end up buying our product? And he was a, he's a history teacher and he started a, a YouTube channel on the side and he wanted to learn how to get that started and up and running. So I, I'm kind of knowing the, where he's coming from. The other question I asked was, what hesitations did you have about buying the product? Mm -hmm. And this was really valuable because he said, you know, he sees ads all the time. He thought internet marketers were kind of scammy. Mm -hmm. And I, I would agree with him. Most of them are. Uh, and, but he said, so I saw your ad. I saw your offer. And uh, I sent an email. So he sent me an email asking a question. And I, rep I answered the question, uh, replied back. And then like a couple hours later, he actually purchased the product. So he's like, after I found out that you were a real person and like replying to people's emails, I'm like, okay, he's legit. It makes sense. And he bought the product. So that's awesome. Uh, so I think the thing that's so important here is a lot of people in internet marketing like being behind the computer, right? That's why they're in internet marketing. And I think the piece that's so important is, you know, Justin and I talk a lot about this with our students is like, don't be allergic to the phone. The phone is the best way to understand more about your customers, your clients, because you get to hear inflections. You get to understand when they are really telling the truth and when you need to dig deeper. The things that you talked about right here, especially with the hesitations, those are the things where you can come in and kind of list out. Here's all the things that we cover, all the things that we do, how we're going to help make sure that you're successful, your warranties, your guarantees, all of those things, whatever your product is. I think that's just an absolute golden nugget that really is important that most people you'll never get from a comment on an ad or through a survey. Totally. Um, and one thing to add to that, like if, if, if you're on the fence about getting on the phone and talking to your customers, it's, I mean, there's an underlying fear for whatever, whatever reason that is, like you don't want to do that. Replace that fear with curiosity. Like, mm -hmm. and fear typically means you're thinking too much about yourself and your mm -hmm. pride. So it's, replace that fear with curiosity and about mm -hmm. wanting to get uh, curious about who your customers are and what you can do to improve. And when you add that, I think that stress and anxiety goes away uh, and you're in a better position to serve your, your, your customers, your clients. Yeah. So, so out of the 10 guys that you call the 10 people who bought your product, I imagine you were probably like, Oh man, did any of them like, do they all hate my product? Are they, am I going to get refunds, et cetera? That, I mean, you, that's, you got, uh, that that's an underlying factor. Cause like whenever you create something, there's like, do people like it? Are they, is it useful? Is it valuable? Like that's, that's always there. Um, 
And then we actually talked to your customer, like, mo like 90% of them were, st like, we were just so excited that someone was calling them and wanting mm -hmm. to improve the, like, and the, the, giving their feedback. Um, I did honestly, from those 10, I didn't get any solid feedback as far as like what to improve with the product, probably because it was, so, they were, so, they haven't, they hadn't used it yet. They hadn't tried it out, but they all love, they all love the marketing. They, and they love the experience up until that point. So that's awesome. Um, so yeah, talk, to, get on the phone, talk to your customers. Uh, and if you have clients, talk to your clients. I know, I mean, another valuable insight I got on the phone with, uh, with a longtime client that we've been working with. And, uh, you know, I asked them, you know, how come, how come we're still working together? Like we've been working together for two years. Like why, why us? And in the back of my mind, like the fear in the back of my mind was, you know what, like video power, it's, it's kind of, it's a smaller agency. There's only like five to seven of us. Um, and you know, I'm always thinking maybe we should try Facebook ads or maybe we should try expanding beyond YouTube. But he came back and he said, you know what, I like you guys because you're focused on YouTube ads. Like it's your niche. It's what you know. Um, and come to find out all of his traffic sources, he has one specific person or agency who's solely focused on that. So he has one person for Google. He has one person for Facebook, one person for YouTube, one person for radio and cable. So like what I thought was a, a weakness mm -hmm. of video power turned into be a strength because of our niche and our focus. And you That's don't, awesome. you don't get that information unless you talk to them. So. No, it's amazing. Thank you for sharing this. This is great. It's nice that you have this listed out. It's a very easy script for people to follow. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, so my tip number two, use survey data to create actionable insights. So we got brought in uh, several months ago to work with a potential client. Uh, we're, and to be like fully transparent, we're in the middle of the video production piece right now. Mm -hmm. that I'd love, I want to share with, with you and, your, and the audience about uh, how we went about getting another market. Cause anytime you get a, a new client, like you don't know, you need to know their, their product and you need to know who their customers and their audiences are. So like what's the quickest, most efficient use of your time to, to do that. And we decided to create a survey and ask their existing customer base several questions. Um, and and that was, that was awesome. So the question, the survey questions that we asked to their, their audience was in one sentence, describe yourself Two: why specifically did you end up purchasing this product? Three, why did you choose th the brand name over other solutions? Four list one thing that nearly stopped you from buying this product. Um, and five, list one thing that you would like to see improved on this product. Uh, it was very, I mean, it was a Google, it was a Google survey. Mm -hmm. there, like, it's free. Mm -hmm. uh, you can create the survey in like 15 minutes. We wrote a quick little intro email to their customer list saying, hey, we're looking to improve the product so we can better serve you guys. Would you mind answering some of these questions? It will take you five minutes. Mm -hmm. So we sent the survey out and we got like 300 responses. So it was a great, we got great responses. And what we, what we gathered was this 60% of the clients or of the customers are professionals in their twenties and thirties. Most of them are female. Uh, they chose the product over the competition for several, several reasons. Price, best reviews online, customer service, convenience, quality of product, or like, you know, the clarity of the product. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see how many mentions there were uh, of, of the reason why they chose it. Yeah. Uh, so three, you know, before moving with, the, with this brand name, what were their main concerns? Their biggest one was the, the fact that it's a new company. It's a startup. It's all done online without someone to oversee the treatment. So it's not like a service. It's more of like an online product. Okay. Uh, and they wanted to know if this treatment really worked for them. So to kind of give some context, this is, uh, this product helps pe improve people's smile. Okay. And, uh, so this was the data that we gathered. This is what we had. So uh, this is really interesting to me, just from the perspective, especially when I talk with clients is everyone likes to talk about how their product is better quality than their competition. I hear that from everyone like, Oh, our supplements are so much better than so-and-so's like, they're just way, ours are better quality. And it's really interesting when you look at this, the index here, customer service is two times more important than the product quality. That's not why people are buying. 
Mm-hmm. And then obviously price and, and reviews are huge. But I just think that's so interesting when people are thinking about your own product. You're like, well, we have the best service. We know this. And that's not really what's driving people. I, that may change market to market. But still, it's just very interesting. As you talked about being so inwardly focused before you get on the phone. Now with the survey, it's once again, they're really not focused on us. They're focused on them. And I just think that's incredible when you look at this data, the amount of power and mentions that come with this. Totally. And, and, and what it does is, is it, pro, it provides a firm foundation for you to build your marketing plan on. It's not so, guessing. It's not like, you know, we're all in a boardroom. What do, what do we, what do we think their needs are or their like needs and wants and desires? Like this is, this is your actual customers telling you exactly what they, what they want, what their hesitations, what their doubts are. Mm-hmm. So from the survey data, it's okay. What do we, what do we, how do we make sense of this? So, so some of the action items that we created from this, can I ask a quick, quick question? Because I really think this is important. And I just had one quick question. Absolutely. When you're doing the surveys, are they all open response? Or did you provide options for people to choose from? The, so that's a great question. The, when we just asked them to describe who they are, mm-hmm. that one was open. Open. Okay. Because they could say, like, we did, like, you know, describe yourself. For example, I'm a 35-year-old female like mother who is working or, or whatever that is <clears throat> uh, with the, why did they choose product competition over other ones? We came up with the reasons why and we created like a, a multiple list that they could choose from. Okay, cool. Uh, as far as our hesitations go, the hesita- the hesitations one, well, that was open ended. We didn't provide okay. them any reasons and that led us to so once they filled it out, we could start to categorize their reasons why. And the, those were the cat, like the categories where there's a newer company or, uh, yep. didn't know if it worked. Beautiful. Thank you. That's awesome. Yep. So with the survey data, uh, now it's time we create actual insights. So one is we knew we, like there had to be a female on the video since that's the, like the majority of their customers. So focus on women. Um, and by far the most this important deciding factor for choosing the brand was price. So that like, let's make that a focus that we can beat other people's prices mm-hmm. in the creative. And then two, before moving forward with their name, they were worried about the fact that it's a newer company. There mm-hmm. wasn't much information online about them compared to their competitors. Mm-hmm. So really they're looking for credibility. They want to make a big, like, they're making a big purchase. It's a big investment. So video needs to, add to that credibility, whether that's through testimonials or online reviews. So uh, those were the, some of them. So what we, what we did then was we decided to take of those 300 people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we asked some of them to create uh, shoot a video ex- like sharing their story. And whenever you get customer testimonials, I like to follow a simple framework. Um, I call it the, sit- like the three S's situation, struggle, solution. What was your situation before using the product? What was your struggle? Like, mm-hmm. what, like and then what was your solution after using the product? Uh, and that creates a, a nice story. So our, That's awesome. Yeah, our plan forward is, is using their customers and having mm-hmm. them share their story. And we'll be using those videos to, uh, to advertise to that specific audience. Beautiful. Quick question for you on your female talent. You said the customer age range was in the twenties and thirties professional woman. When you're looking at the talent that you're going to utilize, are you always trying to match the age demographic exactly? Or are you saying, Hey, if it's women 45 plus, we're going to test out a 35 year old woman, a 45 year old woman and a 55 year old woman. Have you guys gotten to that level of depth yet? Uh, so that's a great question. What we've done is we've, from those 300 people, we've, uh, the number of responses that said, yes, they want to shoot a testimony, like a nicer testimony video with mm-hmm. us. We got like 20 people to 20, 21 people to shoot a video for us. Okay. And we narrowed that down to five and the okay. five that we chose, like one, they had to be, you know, you know, good on camera. Mm-hmm. One of them's in their tw- one of one of the, one of them is in their twenties. Okay. One of them is a male in their twenties. Okay. One of them is in their thirties and one of them is in their forties. Like the 45 was like the stealing the cutoff. The, the Got cut it. Off. Got so it. We, we have people representing all kind of demographics and this, this is where it gets cool. So now our plan is we have all these different people, I guess, ages, 
Mm -hmm. And so now what we can do is put this into our, our framework. So every ad follows like, Hey, what's the hook? Mm -hmm. What's the, what's the problem or the challenge they're currently facing? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's different for each person. So, you know, uh, what's going to get some, what's going to get a female's attention who's 20 is different mm -hmm. than a male's prop uh, situation who's 20. Mm -hmm. And same thing with age, like a 45 year old has different needs and desires than a 20 year old. So that's them sharing their story. And the beauty, like the great part of it is like the solution is the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same product and the credibility or proof is the exact same. And the call to action is the exact same across all of them. We all want them to go to the website to fill an assessment. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing in every, everyone else's industry. Uh, mm -hmm. I just got off a, a phone call with a client who's a business coach and she, she specializes in serving three different audiences. One is like uh, coaches and consultants, mm -hmm. two is business owners and entrepreneurs, and three are people in corporate. Mm -hmm. So those all have different problems, and, uh, but it's the same solution across all three. So now you have your different audiences, you match them with a, a specific hook or problem, mm -hmm. And then your, the rest of your video can be the same. Beautiful. So I, this is a very similar formula to what we do, especially on that top part. We call that the angle iteration. So exactly what you're doing there with your audiences. And this, <laughs> uh, the framework allows you to build the second half once and then focus on iterating those first pieces very quickly, yeah. which is, makes a huge difference. Now, the only thing that's different right here is you have, I added up all the, the, the top numbers, the longest. You, the longest video that you have using this formula is 90 seconds. Uh -huh. Do you guys stick to that pretty religiously? No, it's, it's uh, I think of this as an accordion. Um, okay. we, we've had, we've run ads that are like 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, we've run ads that are like two and a half minutes. Okay. But it's, it's almost, it's, it's, we don't say it has to be 90 seconds, but this just kind of gives a, a, a framework to use and something to, to aim for, but it doesn't have to be the, be that. Got it. So just to give a counterpoint, because once again, this is what I think is so cool about YouTube ads. You run them one way, Tom runs them one way, I run one way. My average ad length now is about four and a half minutes. And it's even getting up to the point where we're running like eight to nine minute ads, because once again, it follows the same framework. It's just becoming more of an infomercial. So I think this is really cool. It's just like how much content can you pack in there and what's going to really help conversion rate? Is it the shorter video? Is it the longer video? Like you talked about the accordion side. I think this is so interesting is once you get everything spec'd out, now you can figure out how much story can you tell and still keep people interested and get mm -hmm. them through that conversion point. So I just, this is beautiful. The five step framework is beautiful. It works super well, but for everyone listening, know that you can keep it short. And I love the way you guys start with your 60 seconds and you work up. And I think that's that point of the, it really is more about the message. Don't focus so much on like, it has to be these specific blocks. Focus more on you have to have these blocks and you have to have them in this order, but the more compelling story you have, it can be two minutes, it can be 10 minutes, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, and I heard this example too, I was like, what's the longest ad you can run? Um, and it was uh, two and a half hours. If you look at the Lego movie, the Lego movie is a two and a half hour ad for Legos. Um, obviously, I mean, on YouTube, you want, you want to adjust, but it's, it's as long as you can be interested and main, maintain people's attention. And I think too, just to add on to that, a lot of it is, it, it, it depends on what you're asking somebody to do. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're asking them for a lead, like a name and an email, yep. 60 Keep seconds, 45 yeah. seconds, 60 seconds. If you're asking somebody to, to spend an hour of their time on a webinar, mm -hmm. that's an hour and a half, or excuse mm -hmm. me, a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're asking somebody to make a purchase right after the video, that's probably more on your line where it's yep. uh, four or five minutes. Yeah, it's got to be longer. It's got to be power packed. And I agree. That's that piece of like, what's the commitment level on their end? That way you can determine the length of creative. But I just think that's so cool. And understand that whichever market you're in, you can build videos that fit based on that level of commitment. But once again, this structure is the most important part because it tells a story in the way the brain thinks, the way we process information. We like the hook, then we introduce the problem. We build up that problem, we get emotional, you introduce the solution, you show the credibility, and then you finally feel ready to take action. Totally. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that's how, that's how we piece everything together. Uh, so that's, that was tip number two. Beautiful. Tip number three, build the creative for your best customers. So this is one of my favorite uh, 
favorite videos we've ever done and favorite case studies. Uh, I got brought in several years several years ago to take care of marketing for a product called Fample. Uh, the Fample is a, it's a full it, it's a it's a flagpole for your truck. You can fly a full size flag from a hitch receiver. Uh, and the entrepreneur that brought me in, you know, he, I loved his approach. He created ten Fample's because he didn't know if he had a product or not. He created ten Fample's and. He went to a local university football game and went to a tailgating party and like, yeah, let's see if we can sell all 10. Mm -hmm. So he sells 10 samples for a hundred bucks. Boom. He's like proving the concept. So now um, I got brought in as a marketing partner and mm -hmm. how do we go about selling the sample? And again, our initial, like our internal discussion, who's going to buy a sample? Oh, duh people who watch football, like football fans, mm -hmm. uh, because that's what we, that's what's been validated. Mm -hmm. So we create the website, we create a video, we create the marketing materials around football fans. Come to find, and we, you know, we sell one or two a day mm -hmm. um, <laughs> during football season. Okay. And, and so it was like, it, was, it wasn't great. Mm -hmm. It was just average. Yep. But then something interesting happened. Uh, we start noticing that in May, June, and July, flagpoles just spiked. Like they went up when okay. no football when no football is being played. <laughs> they were like, "What's what's going on here? Why what's what's going on?" So again, when in doubt, ask your audience. I wanted to know who our customers were. Like, who? What do they? What do they want? So. Questions in one sentence describe yourself. Two, why specifically did you end up purchasing the fan pool? Mm -hmm. Three, list one thing that nearly stopped you from buying a fan pool. Mm -hmm. Four, list one thing that you would like to see improved on the fan pool. And five, uh, I don't have a five. So <laughs> those are the four questions. <laughs> so, and my goal here was okay, these are the four questions. Whatever they, re whatever they reply back, we are going to build a video around this. Whatever their answers are, this is who we're talking to. So the responses we got back were awesome. Here's what they had to say. I'm a 22 year old who drives a Ford power truck and loves God, America, Texas, and guns. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, uh, I'm a 70 year old who belongs to the Patriot Guard Riders and bought a fan pool to fly my American flag. Three, 25 year old male with a 2015 Chevy Silverado, and I love Murica. You can see a pattern emerging here. <laughs> right? And my last laugh was my favorite one. I bought the fan pool to fly the American flag and piss off liberals. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, unfiltered feedback, like, right? okay, who is this audience? Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we took this to a creative team, mm -hmm. and uh, this is our guy right here. This is, this is our audience with the, with the truck, American flag, gun in his hand. Like that's who we were going after. That's um, amazing. So is this guy a part of the brand or is he just a, a, an actor that you worked with? He was an actor that we, got, that we worked with. Uh, got it. Fit, I mean, he, he's a veteran. Okay. He, I mean, fit the demographic perfectly. Like his, his personality is, uh, was him. That's beautiful. So, um, I have a little bit of the video that we could I could share if you wanted to yeah, watch it. That'd be great. Let's see. I'm hoping you can hear it. Let me know. No audio right now. Maybe we just give a link to this. We'll throw it up okay. so you can see. I think that'd be great. But I've seen this video before. It's amazing. You guys did an awesome job on this. So we'll definitely get this link and throw it in so people can watch this. Um, but obviously, you took the customer information and it made a huge difference. Yep. I mean that. I mean we. Yeah, the whole video was built around what they, what they, who, the, who they were, uh, and we got so much good feedback. So, like the result, like the com, like just the comments alone, like they're hilarious. So one of the comments was like, "This is how YouTube ads should be, not some crappy Geico ad. Uh, this is a great ad. If I had a truck, I'd buy one for sure. Or better yet, I'd buy a truck to go with one of these." <laughs> uh, I can't say some of that. Uh, this one. I just ordered 1,776 of these bad boys. That's amazing. 
Um, so which, which is, I mean, this is kind of cool because like how many compliments do you get on an ad? Like, usually Not many. People, yeah. Usually they're, people are really annoyed, but like people loved, like loved it. But then also, I mean, it's great to get comments, but like what were like the sales results from it? Mm -hmm. How did that impact sales? And, you know, overall we ran them on both YouTube and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Overall, we got around like uh, 180 ROAS, 180 mm -hmm. return on ad spend. Remarketing audiences did really well. We did, uh, we did for cold traffic on Facebook, we targeted truck owners plus conservatives. Okay. That, that crushed it. That did 300%. Um, and, uh, and then truck accessories and flagpole for trucks, like the keywords on YouTube, those ones did really well. That's beautiful. The coolest, the coolest, the coolest part with this one is the impact that it had, um, not on Facebook and YouTube, but like on, on organic, organic traffic and direct traffic. Yep. So people watch. So, I mean, you can see like we increased sales, uh, on, uh, on our website by 200% mm -hmm. direct, the direct traffic increased to almost 400%. And we also sell the polls on Amazon and that increased by almost 200%. So what was going on is people would watch the ad on YouTube or Facebook and they see it's branded fanpool and fanpool.com. They pause the ad, they open up a new tab in the browser and they either Google fanpool or they go straight to fanpool.com. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and that we've seen that happen, not on, on this case study, but like we've done brand lift surveys for mm -hmm. some of our clients where we can see the impact that YouTube ads have across Google and direct like branded Google search terms and it increases search terms by like 300%. So like, and that you don't see that impact, you know, directly within, within Google. But yeah. So for those of you watching this, if you've never heard, I talk about isolation experiments, I will put a card in this video so you can go check that out. But essentially that's, we, we go through and put together a scenario where we isolate and only put together certain brand terms inside of the video to push them to a specific website. So that way, if you're already promoting on a channel like a Facebook, you've got stuff going and it's kind of hard to see all uh, the extra in, you know, the extra sales coming in through your organic or direct traffic. This will be a really cool way for you to go through and set up an experiment to help you actually measure that. For sure. So, I mean, that, that was, uh, yeah, those are the, those are the, those are the three tips. Talk to your customers, get gathered data from, from survey tips. And then three, build the creative around your audience around your perfect, your, your, your customers. And again, that just builds the whole campaign on a, like a, a firm foundation. You know exactly what you're creating. You're not going to waste your time. You're not going to waste your, your ad spend dollars. Like, you know exactly who you're, you're, who you're talking to. That's beautiful. So thank you so much for those tips. One more thing I wanted to ask you is how are you continuing to conduct surveys as you're growing out the brand? Do you run this once a year or do you kind of stick with the beginning? And then you kind of focus on just continuing to grow across the different channels. The begin, I mean, beginning for sure. The only other surveys that we'll do after we launch mm -hmm. are brand lift surveys. So, okay. uh, I mean, when we, when we follow this formula, we get really, we see good results. We're able to hit the cost per customer. Mm -hmm. Like that's usually the goal with the ROAS. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there we'll take, sometimes we'll tweak the Korea, we'll tweak the call to action or, if we will shoot different variations of the intro or the hook, we mm -hmm. can tweak that a little bit uh, and then testing different audiences. But like, yeah, the only, we're not, we don't do follow-up surveys because we, mm -hmm. we already did that, mm -hmm. but we do brand lift surveys where we can see how it impacts other, how it imp impacts the brand or it impacts their search results. Totally. So the other question is when you're going through and you're shooting your creative, did you guys do one cut? Do you have it shot in different ways so you can go piece things together? How many versions did you put together so people can kind of understand once you have this good information, you probably still need to test at least a couple of things. So how did you guys go through that process? Yeah, so we have the, the two big biggest things that we would test on our end would be like the hook, like the intro, mm -hmm. and then the call to action. We don't, okay. we don't really test a lot of like different variations of like the solution or different variations of the credibility. Mm -hmm. um, but like we'll just tweak. So what we have rolling out with this, this client that we're working on, um, we'll have, uh, we'll have the three, or I guess five different customer interviews mm -hmm. and we'll, 
kind of, and we have it shot in those blocks and the, the creative team is on board so they know exactly how to edit it for those blocks. And then we'll test two, two maybe three mm-hmm. hooks or variations of, of the beginning part or the call to action. But for the most cool. part, yeah. I mean, that's, that's how we go about it. That's beautiful. So Jake Larson from Video Power, one of the best YouTube marketers I've ever met. Thank you so much for sharing this. This is an amazing process. It's really cool to see you talk about this and really how it's helped you in your business. That's the thing is it's cool when someone talks about a process, but when you actually use it and you can show the results, that's what really gets me excited. So thank you for doing that. If people need some help with YouTube advertising and they would like to work with you, how can they get in touch and figure out if they'd be a good client for you? For sure. Um, I would go to videopower.com. We have a bunch of resources on there. We have, um, you know, a, a, an application process where you can kind of get to know your business and, and, prov- and have like a strategy session with you to, to figure out how we can help you grow your, your business and influence with YouTube ads. So i um, happy to support anyone who comes our way. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for the time, man. I really appreciate it. I know you got a big team and a growing family. So appreciate having you on and we'll chat soon. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure you click on the subscribe button on the screen right now. Also, if you'd like to join the Daily Edge and get the daily dose of what's working in paid traffic and tracking, you can text Daily Edge to 44222.